Good afternoon. Welcome once again to my daily chat. We're at episode number 985, The Gambling Continues. And the topic today is about, do you want a partner or a project? And because Valentine's Day is, what, three days away now? Wednesday, Thursday, yes, yeah, three days away from now, just double check. Um, there may be some attachment to wanting to be in a relationship or to prolong a relationship or to start a relationship. Pick one. <laughs> and I have other offerings and recommendations for you to do differently that might help you be more comfortable in your life. Interested? Let's dive in, shall we? So this topic came up, I've actually talked about this recently, but I figured because it's Valentine's Day coming up, I'll go a bit deeper and maybe a different angle that'll give you some more insight. Um, I actually posted a meme about this earlier today or yesterday about the um, understanding when it's time to walk away. And the thing is that for some of us, probably not everybody, some of us, sometimes we get more invested in the possibility of the person we're with than in their actual reality. I'll say that one again because it's an important piece. We get more invested in that person's, our partners, let me say that way. I can only back it up and say another way. I'll say it even another way. <laughs> Rewind slightly. So you're in a relationship with somebody for a few months. You've got a nice partner, things are going great. But you're noticing that they're not moving up to the level that they could do. Maybe you've done a lot of personal growth work and they haven't. Or maybe you discovered a great book to read that they don't want to read. Where well, there's a disparity, there's a different level. Sometimes there's a temptation because you're in the relationship that you, it's your job, somehow it's your responsibility, to convince them to grow. And you make a project out of it. So I'm calling it a project. Somebody who basically, you're working harder than they are on the relationship. And that's, by the way, one of the biggest keys. Is, first of all, if you're hoping, if you're attempting, attempting to help them grow and they're not willing to grow, there's no point fighting that. It simply isn't. It's not your job to fix them, make them better, make them whole. Because one of two things happens. First of all, well, actually, one of, both things happen. One thing is you start getting a bit frustrated and upset with them because they're not changing because you know there's something better for them. You see their possibility. You know, do you, let, me, let me finish that and cross some thoughts. Okay. On the other part is they're going to get resentful of you thinking the fact that you judge them for not being who you think they should be. So let me back up and rewind that other piece I just said. Sometimes we're so in love with somebody's possibility we overlook their reality. We'd rather see what's possible for that person than see the circumstances they choose to be in. Now, I'm talking about this in primary relationship. I'm not talking about this in other people because sometimes when you're out in the public or you're working with clients, I know for myself as working with clients, I absolutely see their possibility beyond their current circumstance because that's my job. But it's not the responsibility of you in a relationship. Now, you can if you want, but I'm offering some opportunities at the moment to do something different. So basically, if your partner is not doing anything on their own of their own will. This is the biggest piece, by the way, too. If they're not willing to be motivated, if they're not willing to ask questions, if they're not willing to seek help to get where they want to go, ideally outside the relationship, because it's healthier that way, then if you're trying to do that for them, you're trying to fix them, make them better, make them feel more whole, you're really basically making a project out of things. So I said about being a project or a partner, is you want someone who's going to be equal to you. I'm going to sidebar slightly, because I talked about this in my book. Yes, I have a book out. I actually got two books out. In my first book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, one of the chapters in there talks about rubber band, rubber band relationships. And I've talked about this many times before. And it seems any props I can grab. You know what? Hang on one second. <laughs> Just grabbing something that I can use as a prop. I need to do some demonstration. So the rubber band paradigm of relationship, I we talk about it, is, is in relationship, there's a, um, a tension between partners. So it's not rubber band, but it's the idea. And that tension is what keeps a relationship thriving, exciting, growing on edge. Unless one of, the, you think one of these things happens, where you may be working on, the, on your partner, you're growing and you're elevating and becoming better. Maybe you're taking yoga or taking trainings and workshops with any, an attorney Robbins, whoever it is, and your partner isn't. And you come back so high, so excited, so joyful, that you want to convince them to come join you. Because you know your life has changed now. And you're not going back to where you were. You know that. And by the way, this is not one of those euphoric post-seminar um, highs, which I've experienced many times, so I know what it feels like. I'm talking about a transformational experience where you're no longer the person you were. You go back to your relationship, and you're now up there, so, like you've elevated your consciousness, so to speak, and your partner hasn't. There's now great attention on that relationship. There is definitely a much harder pull between the two of you because you've grown, they haven't. You may be on the other, you may be on the other side of this one, so maybe experience the feeling of being left behind and not wanting to grow and wondering why you lost out. Hi, Sue. Nice to see you. Thanks for being in my broadcast. So there's tension on the relationship. When this happens, one of three things can happen. 
The first thing is that the person who you're in relationship with, the partner, sees how much you've transformed and goes, oh, I want some of that. And they do. They actually go to take the seminars you took or read other or, or something different, but they elevate their consciousness and they come up in the same level as you. And then you've got a great balance and relationship again. That's the ideal. Now, there's two other options. One of those options is, is you give up your journey of wanting a partnership and you settle into the project level where you want to help them, fix them, change them where they are, or just simply give up everything to stay where you are in the relationship. This is rare, but people do this one. That's the second choice. The third choice is you're growing, your person is not, and basically you keep growing. It's like, I, my personal journey is more important to me than even any relationship. Not against them, but for yourself. When you do that, relationship ends. It has to, because you cannot, excuse me, you'll have a harder time growing and being elevated and becoming more powerful, more whole, and more successful in your life if you're the partner who doesn't want to do that. I mean, there are people in relationships I know who do this. It's, um, I can say this nicely, it's sad to watch, frankly. The possibility of relationship is expansive, is growth. I talked about this a few days ago about relationships are not 50-50, they're 100-100. You bring all yourself in the relationship, so does your partner. But if they don't bring themselves to grow, to elevate and, and begin, become more of who they can be, and you are doing that, there's a discord, there's a discrepancy that I mentioned before. And the challenge that you may face is choosing growth over partnership. Actually, it's not even a partnership, it's a project, so there's an entitled. It's be, to settle for, what, for settle for less than you know you can have. This is the thing. To settle for less than you know you can have, to stay comfortable in that relationship, is a poor choice. It's not healthy, it's not supporting you, and it's to a large degree, it's also that, that terrible C word I talk about all the time, codependent. So it's important to recognize, especially as we go towards Valentine's Day, if you're thinking about having a relationship or looking at a date, or you're in a relationship, you want to make a highlight, be careful what you're choosing. Get clear that you're looking get clear what you're looking for, because you may be looking for a project. I do not recommend it at all. What I do recommend is equal partnership. That's that, that's what all my work's about. If you clearly want to have an equal partnership and your partner is willing to jump in, great. Both you elevate, both you grow, both you become more of who you can be, and the relationship thrives because of that. But if one of you is growing and the other person is dragging, that's not a relationship anymore. That's a codependent tug of war. Yes, codependent tug of war. Being so caught up in the trappings of where people are, you don't get where you want to go. Now, you can have it if you want. And for some people, I'm going to say this one, I guess, for some people, that idea of being in that sort of turmoil in relationship is familiar to them. And to speak about that, you have to watch yesterday's broadcast. I did a whole talk about the whole thing about um, not being like your parents. That's tying to that one. But the thing about this is you can really own up to who you are and be willing to settle for nothing less than that. In fact, you're absolutely willing and committed to claiming everything that's at the level you're at and beyond. That's when it's a clarity of recognition that you will not settle for less. And that's a day to be proud of. When you own your space and you own your power, you own your authority, to know that you're worthy and deserving a healthy relationship and that any relationship you're actually in or were in no longer satisfy you, satisfies you or meets the, meets the demands you need, meets the level you're requiring at, and you walk away from any relationships that don't support you in that, that's a powerful new day. But it takes courage and it does take willingness. But before all of that, you've got to be aware. So this whole thing was mainly a wake-up call to give you some inspiration, some insight, to give you some thoughts about how perhaps you could be um, stepping into a more clear position of where you want to be in a relationship, how you want to be in a relationship. If you want to be absolutely in a more um, expansive one or a more comfortable contracting one. Now, there are people in the world, plenty of people in the world, who choose the latter. But I'm passionate about people choosing the former, to grow, to expand, to have more, more amazing relationships than they ever knew possible. One of those things is what I just talked about here. Another piece I'm just going to remind you of, I talked this months ago, about the recycling paradigm. Yeah, I'll give you this one to play with. When you notice the relationship you're in is the same as the one before that, and the one before that, it's almost like you're recycling the same relationship experience, just different partner. That's the same thing, basically, but you're not growing. Now, I think I need to go, let me split tracks for a second. That's normally, except that if you notice in your relationships, you're recognizing the same symptoms, but you're experiencing them at a whole other level, that's a different conversation because that's when you're actually elevating. And people say, well, you know, you feel like going around in circles in relationships, like maybe you're not. Maybe you're actually going through an, what I would call a spiral, up, raising up higher. So you actually face the same issues again, 
but you have a different elevation, different place to be. Now, that's not the requirement, but it's one of the choices. Let's give you a whole smorgasbord of choices about how you want to date, who you want to date, and what you want to be in a relationship for. But if you're noticing you are recycling relationships where the same thing's happening again and again and again, different people, same patterns, same words even, and same feelings, that's a clue that maybe you're off track. Maybe in fact you're in a rut versus on track. So this is a recommendation, a reminder, a nudge to really consider what you want in a relationship. And the PS on this, I'm, I'm giving you some pieces I know, is are you willing to claim your singlehood? Are you willing to recognize, in fact, are you willing to choose Valentine's Day this Friday in three days to be a day you claim for yourself to own your, your favorite person yourself in a good way and to love yourself for who you are? My recommendation to you if you're single, and I'm one of those people, is to make Valentine's Day all about you. Not egotistically speaking, like, yeah, look at me, look at me. No, but take care of yourself. Treat yourself well to know how you are. For example, if you are aware of the five love languages, you may have noticed which one of your primary language, love languages you have. If that's the case, how can you satisfy that? How can you express love to yourself through that vein? One of mine is quality time. So my intention on Friday is to take time for myself, away from all the distractions of doing other things, to be with myself. That's a way of expressing love to myself. You may have different ones. Maybe yours is gifts, and you've got to go and, and you're going to go treat yourself to things that will please that center. Whatever it is, my invitation to you if you're single is rather than trying to panic to find somebody to go on dates with on Valentine's Day, because that's the worst day to go Valentine's Day, because all the restaurants are more expensive, all the gifts are more expensive, and the chocolates are already, already sold, <laughs> so are the flowers, is to do something nice for yourself that can satisfy your own need for love. I'll talk about this more tomorrow. I've got a feeling there's going to be another topic on this one. But how you can treat yourself better on Valentine's Day, especially if you're single. So my encouragement to you is to look at this Valentine's Day as a day of freedom. A freedom from the trappings of having to be in a relationship that doesn't satisfy you. The freedom of having to, to, a freedom from having to choose a project to work on, as in a partner who doesn't grow. Been there, done that? An opportunity to claim your sovereignty back. This is, um, well, you can tell it's a passion of mine. <laughs> this is a reminder, as all my talks are. In fact, I definitely recommend you watch yesterday's broadcast, which was, hang on, that was Monday and Sunday. So the last two broadcasts. The, so today's is 8.95, so that means 8.94 and 8.93. I'd recommend you watch that. I'll tell you where you find the replays so you can find them, by the way. Um, check them out because there's some deep stuff in there that will transform your life if you're willing to face the opportunity. So if you haven't seen my broadcast before, this is my daily Facebook Live. I do this every day of the week, which is why it's number 895 today. I've done this for, for basically over three years now. And uh, my, my thousandth, broadcast, thousandth broadcast will be later this month. Um, so if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do this seven days a week, right here on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby, usually at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Do this every day, every day of the week, seven days a week, as I said, and you can find the replays on my business page on Facebook, which is where some of them show up. This is Facebook's thing. But if you go to my business page, which is barrysilby.author, oh, I'll tell you about links. I'll tell you about links in a moment. <laughs> We're going to tell you about those. Um, business page on Facebook, which is barrysilby.author, you can watch probably about two or 300 broadcasts are there, although it's not as easy to scan through because Facebook's a bit more clunky that way. So I do have a backup plan. And by the way, like my business page, please. If you go to my YouTube channel, yes, I have a YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby, or just search my name on YouTube. Um, that channel, please subscribe to. There's a playlist on there called Messages for the Masculine, where every single one of these is shown in a nice, crisp, easy list. It sorts through the part one you want to look for, including the two previous ones I mentioned. You can watch those and get some more insight. Um, oh, and the links. If this speaks to you and you want to get some more help, I'm going to put two links in the comments. The first one is going to be very simple, because, again, Valentine's Day is coming up, if you're single, it's a good time to celebrate yourself. Practicing self-love is a great way to do that. And I have a self-love meditation just for that purpose. How perfect. So I'll put the link in the comments, which is barrysilvy.com forward slash self-love. That link will be in the comments. You can check that out. There's two audio meditations, an AM meditation to set up the day, and a PM meditation to complete the day, and a guidebook with two deep levels of how you can work with yourself to love yourself more. That'll be in the comments. I'll also put in the comments a link to have a chat with me. Yes, have a chat with me. Your gift, my gift to you, not your gift, my gift to you, is have a complimentary conversation. So put a link in the comments, you can check that out. Both of those will be in the comments after I sign off. Um, talk about the replays, we can find that. Um, if you have any questions, comments about this broadcast, please put them below and I'll respond when I sign off. 
you want to get more help, you can message me or click one of the links in the comments. And uh, that's about it. I might talk about that tomorrow. Yeah, I've got some ideas for tomorrow already brewing. So I will see you again tomorrow, I trust. And as always, as a reminder, please take care of yourself. I'll see you again tomorrow.